Advent, Advent, eilig mein Brot. Erst eins, dann zwei, dann drei, dann vier, dann steht das Christkind vor ihr Tür. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad with the early remembrance of the birth of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
the Old Testament written, Isaiah chapter 9. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide their spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading, the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, 
fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we celebrate Christmas Eve, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, we hear the Old Testament reading for this day, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts. Amen. Dear friends, today we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the promised Savior, the one who God has sent to be the Redeemer of the nations. He sent his Son to be born in Israel, the Son of Mary, as promised to King David in the days of old, to redeem us, people who live in this world, creatures of God, people who live in darkness and now will see the light of Christ shining as promised by God Almighty since the days of the fallen creation, as we see in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Yes, this was the promise of God. Actually, the evil foe heard this word, and he learned that moment that God will destroy him eventually, will conquer him. And the one who is going to make it happen is the descendant of the woman, the Son of Mary, even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text of Isaiah we hear on this day is a well-known text of the Old Testament. It's a message which fills our hearts with joy, hope, comfort, 
and teaches us that God indeed loves us to the extent that he does not hesitate to give us his only begotten son to live and die for us. And this son of God, the son of Mary, our Lord Jesus, is king. Yes, he is king, even though his birth is the one we hear in the Gospel of St. Luke, read today, but he is a king. What we see here first is the birth of this king. We heard Genesis, the promise made by God that the Savior would come one day to redeem us. And the Savior coming from God is true God, but is also true man. And the offense, the doctrine of the two natures of Jesus Christ is what shows us who the Savior really is. We learn that it was necessary for Jesus to be true men that he might take our place under God's law that he might be able to suffer and die in our stead. And it was also necessary for him to be true God, that his fulfilling of the law might be sufficient for all men, that his life and death might be a sufficient ransom for our redemption, and that he might be able to overcome death and the devil for us. And this is, beloved, what Isaiah clearly says in the reading we hear today in his chapter 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah announces the birth of Jesus Christ some 700 years before Christ was born. Yes, the Lord was born precisely the way God announced through the mouth of his prophets in the days of the Old Testament. We Christians believe that Jesus, the Son of Mary, is the Son of God. We confess the Apostles' Creed, something that we do today when we celebrate Christmas Eve. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son. Yes, Jesus, the Son of God. As we read in 1 John chapter 2, the verses 22 and 23, Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Savior. Although he is born as the son of Mary, he is the king. And this is what the wise men saw when they brought gifts to the newborn king. As we read in Matthew chapter 2, the verses, two verses. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was being born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. Jesus, the king, king of kings, lord of lords. Isaiah announced his advent, his arrival, his coming. And then we see here the kingdom of Jesus. What kind of king is Jesus? 
what kind of kingdom is his? That we believe that Jesus has a kingdom, this is clear. We pray, thy kingdom come. And of course, when we close the Lord's Prayer and say, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this context, the expression kingdom has a twofold meaning. The kingdom of grace and the kingdom of glory. What is the kingdom of grace? It is the Holy Christian Church. The place where Christians receive the salvation of Christ through the means of grace, word and sacrament. The place where Christians gather together to be blessed by the triune God, to hear his word, to grow in the blessed knowledge of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And this, dear friends, happens also today when we celebrate Christmas Eve when we receive the gifts from God, His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. But it's not only today, not only on Christmas Eve, when people love to be in the churches and sanctuaries, but also every Sunday, every day, we have the opportunity and the privilege to gather together in our church, to hear the word, to praise God, to be in fellowship with our fellow Christians. This is why it is important for us to seek the presence of God every time we have the opportunity, not only when it's Christmas, but all over the year. Jesus, the newborn King, invites us to be part of his family on earth. He teaches us how important it is to be part of his households. Today, when we praise God, when we pray, when we hear the word, we learn how to serve Jesus faithfully, to do his will, to reach out to people who need us, to bring the comfort, the love of Christ, to the people living in this world, especially in the days we still face. And you, my dear friend, you who are among the friends of Jesus, among his faithful, celebrating his birth, you receive from him strength and he empowers you to continue to live as a faithful. But the kingdom of Christ is also the kingdom of God's glory. One day, Jesus will come again in glory. We confess that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And this is why we know how important it is to be prepared to receive Christ in a way that we will be with him eternally. There are two opportunities given by God to the children of men. Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew 25, verse 34. But the same chapter has another verse for the one. Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Dear friends, what God desires in his heart is that you receive his Son, repenting, believing, and receiving forgiveness in the gospel. Furthermore, that you as a Christian, with your fellow Christians, will continue to proclaim the good news, to show the light of Christ. And when you see people fearing, and there are so many reasons for people to fear, then you remember that the presence of God is what brings us comfort and encourages us to live 
as the shepherds learned from the angels, as we see in Luke chapter 2. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The same joy, the same hope that was in the hearts of Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the people God wants to see present in our hearts. So that comfort by the gospel of Christ and by the promise that we will overcome whatever we have to face and that one day eventually we'll be with the King and his kingdom of glory, we continue to hear his word, to walk with him and to ask him to be the way as he promises to be and help us to continue to live walking in the way. Christ, the one born to redeem us. Amen. Merry Christmas to all of you and a blessed year of 2021. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your Church throughout the world. So guide and govern her by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit and the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the helpful spirit of your grace, that they may please you in all things. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need, that they may have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, be released from their afflictions. Through Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.